is something pretty cool. So I have to go to that rehearsal office. Yeah. Okay, test, test, test. Can everybody hear with the microphone? Okay, uh, we're gonna get started in a second here. Uh, but as we get started, first off, my name is uh, Mike McNamara. Hi. I'm one of the teachers over here at Adams Middle School. Uh, I'm gonna try and MC this in honor of uh, Jay Haydell celebration, celebration of life. As the band's going and getting settled in, we want to let you know and remind you: there's water. Anytime y'all need water, there's water back over here. Uh, help yourself to as many bottles of water you need for this. Also, please silence all phones. Please turn off all phones.
As we're getting started here, we'd like to thank the American Legion Band, Mr. Ron Totaro, coming on up here. We have a special award coming for you. For thank you for bringing out the American Legion Band to perform tonight for Mr. Jay Haydell. Now, as we get started, we have to introduce some very important people here tonight. First and foremost, Miss Debbie Haydell. Please stand. We also have Mr. Scott, uh, Mr. Scott Haydell, Jay's son, Deanna, Abigail, and Anna is the wife and daughters. We also have Blake and Evan, Jay's son and grandson. And we also have jo uh, Jody Haydell and his fiance Carrie and his son Jamie. Now, as you can see, the building that is named after Mr. J. Haydell is over here to my right with it. Some basic, some basic info on it. This building you're looking at was a dream of J. Haydell that he referred to as paradise. It was completed in 2010 in the 6,600 square feet, which can seat up to 225 people. The building includes a band rehearsal room, an area for plays, pageants, and other programs, a percussion room, and two dressing rooms. Although this building was his vision, Jay realized that he needed guidance to make his dream come true. And that is where these two special people come in. Dr. Joseph A. Bayer, who's somewhere, who will come and speak in a minute. And the second person in the school system who guided this project through from the start. This person has many accomplishments, including Regional Principal of the Year, but by far, her biggest accomplishment in her 38 plus years in education was that she hired not only Jay to be the band director, but also me to come and teach PE as well. <laughs> now, that is something I, I know she is still proud of and talking about to this day. Speaking for everyone here today, we'd like to thank Dr. Cheryl Milam for everything she has done to make Jay's vision come become a reality, which will continue to benefit students for years to come. Dr. Milam, please stand up, be recognized, and we have a special award for you. Come on up here. To me, Jay was more than the greatest band director of all time who had the privilege who I had the privilege to work with. He was a man who had a great heart and cherished doing things for all people, especially the teachers and staff he worked with at Adams. Every year prior to Christmas break and for teacher appreciation, Jay would make sure that every person at the school felt appreciated by handing them a gift certificate for a local restaurant. No one knew where this came. But for after about five years, I, asked, I passed a comment to Jay and asked him about it, where he confided in me that he started doing this when he realized some teachers did not feel appreciated for what they do for students. To me, that is what exemplified what Jay was all about. Now, our first speaker of the day will be the director of bands, Dr. Joseph Abair from Loyola University. Yes. 
Dr. Abair. Dr. Abair. Thank you. I am Joseph A. Bear. I was a band director at Loyola University for 50 years, of which at that time, Jay Haydell was getting his master's degree. And I was asked to speak today, and I'm honored that the family wanted me to talk to you a little bit. And the first thing they said was, please make it humorous. Okay, well, that made me start thinking, you know, because I have so many stories, we'd be here till tomorrow morning. Because the one thing about Jay Haddell, as much as he loved those kids, loved music, loved his family, he always found humor in something. I'm going to ask the young man playing the sousaphone, son, sousaphone player, tell the sousaphone player come up here. I asked this young man to come up because it's part of the story I'm going to tell you, and if you understand it a little bit better. All right, I'm going to ask this gentleman to turn to me. If you notice on the back of sousaphones, the bell it is detached from the rest of the horn. You got to make sure you tighten up these screws, okay? Thank you. Well, Mr. Haydell was playing baritone for his master's degree at Loyola. And we would often go hear other bands, and one particular band, a junior high school, Bell, matter of fact, junior high, I don't remember the band director's name. These kids walked up almost like what you just saw here, but they were in step, they looked like soldiers. And they all filed in, and when the band director stood on the podium, Every kid snapped his horn. And Jay looked at me and said, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. You know, I wonder if they play that stiff. Well, they wound up playing incredibly well. In fact, they were playing high school literature at the time. And so we had a concert at Loyola a couple of weeks later. And everybody was set up. Jay was sitting in the back. Jay had a baritone that had a detachable bell. So I'm standing there and I stood on a podium, got ready to conduct, raised my horn, and I looked back there and Jay decided he was going to imitate those junior high school kids. So he flipped his horn and a bell went flying. You know, so I just, I just stood there and of course you couldn't keep a straight face. We had to wait until the trumpet section passed his bell back and he put it back on the instrument and we waited and I signaled to him, tighten it up, Jay, tighten it up, okay? But that was Jay and uh, every year I came here to help him recruit. And again, I know very few band directors who teach because they love kids and they love teaching music. Salary did not matter, and we always complain about facilities, but that didn't stop him. He did his best to teach the kids, and we have some of the finest, and I mean the very finest, musicians from East Jefferson, Jesuit, and Adams here. So, again, thank you, Debbie, for having me speak, and I know you, like me, I'm going to miss it. I already do. Thank you. Dr. Hebert, in behalf of coming tonight to represent this, we have a brief award for you to honor that. Our next speaker is one of Mr. Haydell's former students from East Jefferson High School, Mr. Earl Rosier. Prof wrote something in my yearbook um, in my senior year, and I just want to share this. 
Life is made up of a lot of little things, and of course, things can be seen from the river boat in the bayou along the city park golf course. Seeing life can be like seashells. Today is the way to Disney World, to Washington, and tell me about the way you can play piccolo in Forever Lost in my mind's own eye. So you cast your fate to the wind and see that if one reads this page, can they make any sense out of life? And that's Prof. Pass to class. First of all, I'm very humbled to be here to honor a man who has formed so many lives in a positive way and pointed me in the right direction. Anyone who knew Prof could be standing here telling their stories about how he influenced them in their lives. Prof was more than a music teacher. He was bigger than life itself. He was a man that put his entire heart into teaching and developing his students, not only with music, but he taught us to become productive human beings. Prof taught us all many life lessons. He taught us to give 100%. He taught us discipline. He taught us passion. We learned how to set goals and how to focus on reaching them. Many of the same principles I'm sure we all use today in our lives. Prof is also tough. He demanded 100% from everyone, which is why the band was great for so many years. At the same time, Prof was gentle and very kind. He was also a lot of fun to be around. These pages are driving me crazy. He provided opportunity for us to be able to find ourselves. He had a heart of gold. When I first met Prof in 1973 as a freshman, I was a saxophone player. For many years, I wanted to play the drums. Well, he made that happen. He made my dream come true. I'm sure he did that for so many others as well. Prof is also a Christian man who believed in God. And I can tell you he made sure I did as well. He was still teaching me life lessons long after high school. I think about the events that were created by being in a band at East Jefferson. Practicing in the band room, playing the drums on the bench outside from the band room. The heavy music stand slamming when we made too many mistakes on the song. Practicing the halftime shows on the football field, his voice through the megaphone. Marching out on the show road for Friday night football games, playing Shaft, the warrior dance song, the fight song as they lit the fire of the initials EJ in the end zone. The parade season, the pride we had when marching. We knew we were, we were the best because Prof made us the best. The band trips, Shreveport, Washington, Disney World, as, many, as well as many other places before and after my time at East Jefferson. I mean, who takes a Jefferson Parish public school jazz band to Europe? Prof, that's who. And so many other memories. So many other memories, how he danced when directing the jazz band, shortstop for lunch, frost top, and so many times I had to get a pass to class from Prof. One funny story about the Loyola Summer Band. We saw a different side of Prof, a more refined, charming man. You see, East Jefferson was all boys, and the Loyola Summer Band had girls in the classroom. We gave Prof such a hard time about being so polite, and all he would do was, which meant see the concern in my eye. Anyone who met Prof instantly liked him and loved him as well, like a dad, a brother, a mentor, and a best friend. Prof made a lot of sacrifices for all this to happen. His weekends during football season, Mardi Gras, band trips, a lot of great times. He truly gave up a lot to do what he, what he did for his students. Prof always talked about how much he loved his family. <clears throat> Prof loved his dear wife and children and grandchildren. They gave him the support and energy he needed to be the man he was. So I, not only do I want to be up here and honoring my mentor, my best friend, and a dad, we also need to admire and honor his family as well. I mean, how many people would give up their time to allow a man to teach and develop so many young people for so many years? His family played a huge role in all the great things that Prof gave to so many throughout his lifetime. So Debbie and company, we love you, 
and we thank you for what your, your part and what Prof did for so many people for so many years, for your dedication and your sacrifice. We have a little something for you. I've been trying to hide it, but how do you hide a drum head? So everyone here, if you haven't signed it, we want to give this to Debbie. I, I, you told me not to make you cry, but I can't help it. I'm about to cry. So if you haven't signed a drum head, this is a gift to you, Debbie. Go we'll bring it to her. I'd like to end. I'd like to end by quoting Prof. Today is a good day to have a good day. I love all y'all. We're all a family. We're all Prof's people. God bless. Now, on behalf of this, we would like to present you, Mr. R. Rosier, with a certificate. That's all right. Hey, my name is Robert Styron. I'm a talented music teacher in Jefferson Parish. Um, I was so pleased that there is a, a, a welcoming face because that's not always the case with band directors and talented music people. I walked in the door the first week or two of this school three years ago to find out that Jay Haydell student taught my cousin, my first cousin at East Jeff a long time ago, Ronnie Styron. My name is Rob Styron. So uh, the music stays in the family. And since then, uh, we've been able to build a, a little bit of a program here in talented music. And uh, how that process does work is that the band director usually recommends some students. And Mr. Haydell recommended so many people. He believed so much in so many of his students that um, you know I was able to reach out and uh, recruit quite a few people that are, have gone on to go into high school. And that was just three short years ago. Um, and so I'd like to welcome right now Tuss Lee, who is one of our newest talented music students who will be performing first Gymnopedi by Sati.
Great job handling the wind there, buddy. Thank you for that. Up next, we've got Chloe Ekblad playing I See the Light.
We're bringing up uh, most of our talented music students to sing, uh, sing, play on an ensemble piece, um, Abide With Me, a good sending off, I believe, uh, followed by We Shall Overcome.
Thank you, Mr. Rob Steyer and talented band, talented music. Next, we will have Mr. Brandon Mitchell, who went to school with Jay Haydell, Mr. Haydell, way back in the day at Jesuit High School. Awesome man. Uh, Miss Debbie, Jody, Scott, Blake. Uh, I want to apologize first because you said to keep it to three to five minutes. Uh, the stories that I have uh, involving Mr. Hadell can go on for hours, so I'll do my best to keep it as short as I can. Uh, I was a student at Jesuit from 1990 to 1995, but my friendship with Mr. Hadell started long before that. I began sixth grade at Theodore Roosevelt Middle School in August of 98, of 88, during one of the first PE classes. Mr. Lloyd Brackney, another great band director from this area, decided to issue a musical skills test. Believe it or not, at six foot, 120 pounds, with two left feet, I ended up having some type of rhythm, and next thing you know, I had a trumpet in my hands. Then, due to a most fortunate turn of events, my mom worked with Ms. Debbie. Uh, I soon started private lessons with Mr. Hadell, and the rest was history. Over the course of the next seven years, I was lucky enough to get to know Mr. Haydell in all three of his offices. That's right, all three. His first office was on the third floor of Jesuit High School. I believe it's room 302, if I remember correctly. It was on the third floor, and thankfully somehow I managed to stay on his good side for the most part, and only had a few encounters with him in this setting. Being called to see him in this office was never a good sign. The other students would gaze intently through the windows, I can still see him sitting there behind his desk, glaring at me with that stare that was more than enough to make you instantly regret whatever it was that you had done. And I can hear him yelling, damn it, Mitchell, and splintering yet another conductor's baton on the edge of his desk at my expense. There's no telling how many of those batons paid the ultimate sacrifice as a result of something that I had done. His second office was one that only a select few of us had the pleasure of knowing. Myself, his son Scott, and their next door neighbor Carlos had the joy of riding to and from Mr. Hadell uh, to school every day. He was a modest guy. He drove a modest car, a 1980s era Chevy Malibu classic station wagon with faded blue paint that he affectionately called Big Blue. This thing was fully equipped. It had it all, hand cranked windows, an old push button AM FM radio that was really good at playing static, an air conditioner that never worked, ceiling fabric that sagged. It actually came with two keys. You needed one to open the door and one to start the car. Vinyl seats that either froze or burned your legs, depending upon the time of the year, and a melt crate in the back filled with bottles of oil, power steering fluid, antifreeze, and other various life support equipment needed to keep Big Blue in top performance shape. Some days, Big Blue started on the first try. On other days, it took a few attempts and some very, shall we say, kind words. In true musician fashion, when the ceiling fabric began to sag to the point of touching our heads as we drove, Mr. Hadell tucked drumsticks into the roof trim to tighten the fabric up to a more manageable sag. But Big Blue is one of my most treasured life experiences. Scott, hate to let the cat out of the bag here, but Big Blue is actually the first car that I actually learned how to drive in. So uh, Scott and I have kept that secret for 30 years now. For five years, Mr. Hayden and I spent countless hours and made countless memories in Big Blue that I'll never forget. Being stuck in traffic, coming home from school gave us all the time we needed to talk. Mr. Hadell was always ready to listen and take your burdens and, and problems as his own. But at the end of the drive, advice was given, problems were solved, and we were all a bit wiser thanks to Mr. Hadell. Most parents spend good money for that kind of therapy these days. We had Mr. Hadell in Big Blue. Remember when I said the AC never worked? Well, for five years, we drove to and from school with layer, layers of clothes on to keep us warm in the winter and the windows down to keep us cool in the spring. Then one day, towards the end of my senior year, Mr. Hayden and I were headed down Bank Street starting our drive home and became a victim of one of New Orleans, New Orleans infamous potholes. Big Blue bottomed out, we heard and felt the impact, and then all of a sudden the AC that has never worked kicked on full blast. <laughs> he and I looked at each other for a moment, burst in one of the best laughs of my life. We actually had to pull over because we were laughing so hard we had tears in our eyes. 
We rolled the windows up and drove home enjoying the cold air for the remainder of the school year and never touched the air conditioner again for fear that it would stop working. His last office is one that we're all probably most familiar with. It's his home office. Thousands of kids have walked through those doors over the years. We walked in nervous, scared, and unsure, but we all left calm, confident, and comfortable. Mr. Hadell did that. My time was 5 to 5.30 p.m. every Wednesday for seven years. If those walls could talk, they'd have some amazing and potentially incriminating stories. You see, it wasn't just music that was taught in that office. There were many days my trumpet didn't even leave the case. The life lessons I learned from Mr. Hadell in that office have helped mold me into the person that I am today. He was a mentor, a confidant, but most of all a friend, friend to us all. An amazing man with a huge heart who was willing and able to selflessly spend his time to dole out advice no matter what the situation. Over the years, we spent hours in that office just talking and listening to some of his favorite bands on the CD player. That damn CD player. He loved that CD player. I'm sure most of you probably remember it. It was a silver and red Sony Explode CD player that looked like something out of a 1980s Run DMC video. This thing was a beast. When able, he kept it plugged in because if not, it used all of the D-cell batteries, literally all of them. And he brought it to school from time to time, and it took up the rest of the space in the back of Big Blue, right next to the Milk Creek. But it felt, it fit Mr. Hadell. It was loud and big, and spit out some amazing music for us all to hear. What I wouldn't give for one more lesson in that office, and one more Tower of Power song, Despite everything life threw at us, we remained close friends throughout the years. Life got busy. I got married. Mr. Hadell was there. I started a family, joined the military, and spent a lot of time overseas. He started working here at Adams and has dedicated his time to create what has become an amazing music program. No shocker there. But no matter what he had going on, he always found the time to send me a message every July on my birthday. Just a few weeks before he passed. He sent me the last message that I will ever receive. Good morning, Brandon. Happy birthday, son. It's an amazing the number of great people he has put in my life. Just think, Brandon Mitchell and Jay Haydell may have never met if it wasn't for music. Love, Mr. Haydell. Well, Mr. Haydell, to quote one of your favorite bands, Tom of Power, thank you for showing me how to keep my monster on a leash and showing us all what it meant to have soul with a capital S. Mr. Brandon Mitchell, we'd like you to come on back up here. On behalf of everything that you have done, we'd like to send a token of our appreciation for you. Thanks a lot. And for those that don't know, he flew in from Washington, D.C., I believe it was, to come speak solely for this purpose. Thank you. The next speaker we have lined up is Ms. Hannah Martin, who is one of his students here at Adams Middle School. Mr. Hedo, Prof, Papa, however you knew him, he probably imp impacted you in a way unlike any other. I started band in elementary school, but I had no intention of rejoining once I had come to Adams. However, that all changed as soon as I met Mr. Hedo. As soon as I stepped into that pack building, I could tell that he absolutely loved his job and took pride in what he did. 
every morning we walked into the band room, we were greeted by a music stand that had been turned into a table. On that table were little pieces of paper. These papers were inspirational quotes that he thought that we needed to have every morning. His passion is what drove me to continue. He made me want to have a leadership, a leadership position in the activity that I cared for most. So I became drum major at Grace King from my junior and senior year. Even after graduating, I continued that love and passion for music by becoming a dedicated member to the American Legion Post 377 band. He made me excited to do band again, and I had even gained the courage to tell him that I had already been in band for two years prior to joining Adams. That was one of the best and worst choices I could have made at the time. Good in the sense that I was able to push myself and participate in the advanced band and really hone in on my skills and improve. Bad because, well, it was the advanced band, so it was harder. And it was a drastic change from hot cross buns to steal the thunder. It definitely took me by surprise, to say the least. This upgraded position pushed me to practice and improve myself so that I could play correctly be the best that I could be and avoid hearing that drumstick hit that stand every day. In 2015, I was chosen as the recipient for his John Philip Sousa Award and therefore got a trophy and my name put on the plaque in the building. I will forever cherish that moment because of how much I had improved, all with his help. He had such a proud look on his face and gave one of the best hugs I've ever received after he gave me that trophy. Papa truly was an amazing role model and director. Renaming the Pack building after him is such a beautiful way to celebrate his life and pay, and pay tribute to all that he has done for the school and everyone that he has taught. Mr. Hato, thank you so much for all that you have done for me. Hannah, as a way of saying thank you, please come accept a gift from this. Now we will have our band, various select musicians, American Legion Hall, Post, as well as many other people perform a selection called Inspired that was written and commissioned for this night for Mr. J. Haydell.
Now, thank you, Ms. Lenicki, the band, the American Legion Hall, and various other members that were part of the take, that made that take place. The last speaker we have tonight is Mr. Matt Chauvin, who took numerous moderate lessons for Jay many years. Matthew Chauvin. Um, I took with Mr. Haydell for a long time. Uh, I went to Holy Cross for high school and middle school really, but I started taking from Mr. Haydell way before that. Um, I guess you can say it's kind of a family tradition for us to take from Haydell. My dad, who's standing right over there, he took from Mr. Haydell when he was just a little kid too. And my uncle played for, with Mr. Haydell at EJ, just barely missed going to Montro. So. We joke about him sometime with that. I um, started playing trumpet in fourth grade at St. Edward the Confessor, and my dad basically jumped on the opportunity to take me to Mr. Haydell, and I'm really glad he did, because I had so many fun memories with him all throughout those years that I took with him. And even some days, like Mr. Brandon over there said, we wouldn't even play anything, and we actually had a leg up on him he discovered Facebook, so <laughs> we would watch the Tower of Power videos on Facebook, and and there was many of those days where we would just talk about life. One day in particular that I'm reminded of is my dad had to, I think, go to work at one point, and my mom actually brought me, but my mom's one of those people that she doesn't go into lessons with me. She, she thinks she freaks me out, so it was just me and Mr. Haydell, and I don't think we played a single note. We just talked and talked about what was going on and about what each other were doing. He bragged on his kids a lot. These kids behind me and everyone that was at Adams, he would always brag about them and talk about how great they were. How they were all special to him. And this meatball is real proud <laughs> that I got to be a part of his life and he was a part of my life, my dad's life. And I'll leave you with 
one real funny story during a lesson with Mr. Haydell. One day when I was playing horn, I forgot to say I switched to horn in seventh grade. So one day I was playing horn in the lesson. And if anyone who's played horn knows, sometimes your fingers kind of slide up towards the mouthpiece when you're playing, especially when you're little and you still can't hold the horn right. And he yelled at me one time for it, saying that I need to put my fingers in the right spot and that I was playing with the wrong fingers because I was playing with my pinky. And he was like, now you're going to show me that you can play with your right hand too. So I just turned around to my dad and played with my right hand. And he was dumbfounded. So I'll leave you with that. I'm so happy and so honored that Miss Debbie and the Haydells let me speak today. And I'm so thankful for Mr. Haydell for letting me be a part of his life for a while and introducing me to lifelong friends that I wouldn't have known otherwise. So, thank you. Mr. Matt, please come back here. Stay right here. We'd like to present this to you as we have taken part of the half of this today. Thanks a lot. Now, we will have Jason Scott come to speak. Check. All right, so just for a little bit of context, I am the middle son. I am the one that never played music. <laughs> but for every big blue story, ooh, don't let that fly away. For every big blue story, thank you, Brandon. At yeah, if you didn't know Big Blue, then you don't know what you were missing. Legacy is defined as anything handed down from the past, as from ancestors or predecessors. Legacy is what most of us strive for, a way to leave this earth better than we found it. For the past little bit this evening, you've heard some of my dad's past students and mentors speak about that legacy that he placed on their lives. I now want to spend a few minutes to speak to the person that we call dad and the legacy that he had on our lives. For most of you here today, you all had the privilege to know our dad for a moment in history. As his sons, we had the opportunity to know him for a lifetime. So who was the man that we, as his sons, knew? I never understood music like my dad did. However, I understood my dad's patience and willingness to accept me as I am. Oh, he did asked me to try. He asked me to try one time with a clarinet. So he got me a clarinet. He took me over to Mr. Frank Menino's house. I remember going to Mr. Frank Menino's that first time. He was one of my dad's many mentors for that first ever lesson. And if you knew Mr. Menino, when you walked in the house, all you smelled was tobacco. He would smoke a pipe tobacco and boy, it smelled good. Mr. Menino tried to get me to understand the very basics of playing an instrument. <laughs> Needless to say, I stayed with the radio. Yet my dad was understanding that music, other than listening to it, was not going to be my forte. There was never a feeling of force to play an instrument. He left that up to my other two brothers. And in that moment on the way home from Mr. Menino's house, when I felt like I failed my dad, it was my dad's unconditional love that shined through. He understood that music performance was not my thing, and he was perfectly okay with that. My dad's passion was to teach. He defines what a band director should strive to be. His desire was not so much to win all the accolades in the music world. His desire was to teach a child how to properly assemble a trumpet the proper way to strike a drum head. Thank you, Anna, for telling me how to properly say that. I said hit a drum head. She said no, strike a drum head. The proper way to install a reed on a clarinet, or simply how to understand what all those lines, dots, I still don't understand on a sheet of music, face. 
every cow eats grass, boys do fine in the summer, stuff like that. I ain't got a clue. That's why I just turn on my, my phone. Now, as kids, Jody, Blake, and I grew up watching wrestling. Back in that day, for us, it was the WWF and the WCW. It was not The Rock, but it was Hulk Hogan or Macho Man Randy Savage. It was not John Cena, but it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan or the Junkyard Dog. It was not The Undertaker, but it was Nature Boy Ric Flair. Woo! Woo, yeah. If y'all don't know, I'm from North Carolina. I'm living in North Carolina, and apparently he resides up there somewhere. At least that's what the police reports say. <laughs> the full Nelson, drop kicks, headlocks, sleeper holes, figure four leg locks were the moves, and you name it, my brothers and I, we tried it. On each other, and sometimes on dad. Whether it was a kick in the butt, a punch to the gut, a steel chair, pillow to the back, or jumping from the top row to bed, we did it all. We would wrestle inside and outside day and night, and if we were not wrestling, we were laying on the front floor with our dad, watching it on TV. We would even wrestle in a two foot high pool that lived a very short life on our back patio. You see, my dad built that pool. In between everything he was doing with the bands, he built a pool. It was a crowning achievement for us boys. We wanted a pool, and a pool we got. All two feet high and 10 feet diameter, just a monstrosity of glistening H2O. Sure enough to cool off the hottest, most humid Kenner day in the dog days of summer. My dad worked many hours building this oasis on our back patio. And funny story, to this day, you can still see some rust stains from it. We were going to be the talk of the town. Kids would want to come from miles away to play in this pool. However, that dream would not last but maybe a couple of days. The plan was simple. The stage was set. Jody would send me in the ropes the side of the pool and I would bounce off the side and come back at my brother with ferociousness. Unfortunately the pools, the ropes, the side of the pool did not hold me. What took hours under the scorching heat to build came down in under five seconds. Water everywhere. We had a cocker spaniel Buffy that quickly heard how to learn quickly had to learn how to dog paddle just to avoid the rising waters i knew in an instant that i was surely dead i quickly sought refuge in my bedroom sobbing telling whoever would listen mom dad is going to kill me boy was i wrong what happened when dad got home was not ridicule or scorn or anger or disdained. What did happen was forgiveness and unconditional love. In that moment, my dad did what Jesus would do. For many of you, our dad was a teacher, a mentor, a father figure, an organizer, and a perfectionist to a fault. To his three, sons, his three sons, sorry, our dad was all those things, and he was also humble, simple, forgiving, accepting, God-fearing, and most importantly, he unconditionally loved us. No matter what paths our lives took, he loved us. On that day in August, our dad passed away. But it gives me solace knowing that in the blink of an eye, Dad closed his eyes on this world and opened his eyes to glory. Every Sunday night on my way home from work is typically when I would call my parents. 
So that night, I work about 45 minutes from the house, so it's a good opportunity to catch up with them. So that night, I called home. My dad answered, and like 99.9% .9 of the times when dad would answer the phone, it was, hold on, here's mom. But mom was on the recliner. Dad was in the other recliner. And dad said, mom's sleeping right now. And I said, you know, that's okay. I'll just talk to you. My wife helped me, because I'm not technologically savvy. My wife helped me photo, not Photoshop, screenshot that call. For 35 minutes, my dad and I talked about everything. And then we said, I love you, when I got to the grocery store near my house so I could go get something to eat. That was the last time I talked to my dad here on earth. But I know that one day I will talk to him again. This is the dad that we know. This is the dad that we love. And this is the dad that we miss. We love you, Dad, Jody, Scott, and Blake. My dad loved music. So as part of his continued legacy, our family has started the Joseph P. Haydell Jr. Memorial Scholarship. For those that have already had the opportunity to donate to the scholarship, we say thank you. But we also wanted to take an opportunity just to reach out to those in attendance today. And just to let you know, this annual scholarship will reward a current high school senior from a pool of applicants from Jefferson, Orleans, St. Charles, and St. Tammany parishes who is choosing to continue his or her love of music in college, either through studying music or performing in an ensemble. This applicant will be chosen from, the, from this pool after the student receives a recommendation from his or her band director and has written an essay for the application process. If you are interested, there is information in your program today about donating to this fund. And if you have any questions, my wife and I will be around here after this to answer any questions. This fund will allow my dad's legacy for love of music to continue to enrich southeastern Louisiana musicians. Thank you all very much. What great weather we're having here. No sun, there's a nice breeze. Hi, I'm Nicole Lonicki. I am the current band director here at Adams. Um, it has been an honor to put this on for Mr. Haydell. Um, I didn't even know him and I'm starting to tear up. Um, <laughs> although I've really gotten to know his family and the community here and, and he was well loved for sure. Um, every single story is just about how great he was, how many lives he's touched in, you know, Exhibit A, all of you here today. Um, Mrs. Haydell said something to me earlier when we were starting to put this together. She said, he's gonna let it happen, but as soon as it's done, he's gonna have it downpour and it's gonna be over. So, um, we're gonna try to wrap this up quickly. I do want to recognize a couple students here today um, some of them did have Mr. Haydell, so if you had Mr. Haydell in the band, please stand. I also want to recognize a few students um, that he didn't have, but ha are continuing his legacy here at Adams. Uh, all the eighth graders, please stand. I do have a couple trophies to hand out. I heard he did outstanding sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth grader. So I want to continue that for him. Plus, I think it's a great idea. He has tons of great ideas. There's a ton of paper in that room. A ton. I'm still going through it. Um, the first one 
is for the drum major of our band from the parade season that we had. We did all of one parade this year. Hopefully we'll do more. This goes to Darian Bailey, our eighth grader drum major. Maybe I shouldn't walk that far away. Let's see, who's next? All right, we're gonna start with sixth graders. I really could not pick one, so I picked five. Um, if you are in the front, come up. If you're in the middle, I'll give it to you later, I promise. First one I pulled was Lizney uh, Vallecillo, Vallecillo. She is just amazing. She practices her flute. She comes into class and is like, guess what I practiced? I finally got that part. Another outstanding sixth grader, trumpet player. He also comes in very excited and just plays all the time. Zavi Ramos. Next one. I heard she's moving away next year, so I definitely needed to give her something. She was the first person to nail this bell solo. Asia Lewis. I told her she's playing the bells. She's like, do I have to? I said, yes, because you have to play the bells. So she really stepped up to it. This guy has played two instruments already. And he did it without even asking. He just kind of took it on. This is Selvin Uyola. Selvin Uyola. One more sixth grader. He learned the saxophone like no other in like three weeks. Um, he's the only person that tried out for, not Allstate, it was something or other like that. This is Daniel Rivera Torres. Honor Band, that's what it was. He tried out for Honor Band. All right, moving on to seventh grade. He is so excited. I say that about every student. They're so good. Um, every time he walks in the door, he says, good morning. And he's always on point with his drumsticks. Anthony Newman, our outstanding seventh grader. And our eighth grader, I know that we will be fine when she is there in our saxophone section. She knows everything by ear. You can say, can you play that song? And she'll nail it within 30 seconds, promise you. Rebecca Ramos Rivera. At least this would not be a Haydell event without a Haydell Memorial Award. This person talks about Haydell all the time, talks about how fond she is of him, brings, really brings his memory back to the life of this band room. Um, so this award is going to Elena Bush. One last recognition is not a student, but a composer who wrote Inspire. His name is Eric Morales. He was not able to be here today due to his family getting COVID. Story of the years. Um, but he would have wanted to be here today and he wrote Inspire for us, um, for Jay Hado. So we can give him a round of applause and spirit. <laughs> I think that's it. My brain's been a little crazy today. Um, 
From me, thank you so much for coming. Um, if you have a student up here, they are responsible for their chair, stand, music. So please don't leave until they've done that. We spent hours putting chairs out here today. We could really use their help and your help if you're available. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you for coming. Now, for the ones that do not know, Miss Nicole Lenicki never did meet Jay. She was hired as band director about a month after that incident. This whole ceremony, and some people may want to take credit for it, things like this, but this whole ceremony was basically with Nicole and Nikki, with everything with it, from the programs, the American Legion Hall. I can't say it enough of the work that she's done for everything that takes this to place. That sign out there, she took it and did everything with it. The school board helped us get it through, but she's the one that did it all. So I can't say enough to everything she's done for me to put this on and everything for this. So, Mr. Cole, we have this plaque for you. Now, the most important person who's coming up here to say a couple of words. Here you go, Ms. Debbie Haydown. If I don't get through this, I have a lot of backup. This is my three boys and my grandchildren. <sighs> On behalf of myself, my children, and my grandchildren, I cannot adequately express all the thank yous we owe for this event this evening to the Jefferson Parish Public School System for allowing this to take place, the principal of Adams for the use of the facility, all the past administrators who Jay worked under, and especially to Dr. Cheryl Milam, the former principal of Adams who hired Jay for traveling all the way from North Carolina to be with us tonight. Last but certainly not least, Coach Mack and Nicole who proposed the idea, did all the legwork, and followed up for months to have this beautiful ceremony. We will never be able to thank y'all enough. To our speakers, Dr. Joe Abair, former director of bands at Loyola, who had the headache of working with Jay on the design of the band room and has been a friend for over 40 years. Earl Roger, who we met as a student at East Jefferson. He and his family have become lifelong friends. Brandon Mitchell, who you've heard, flew in from Washington, D.C. just to be with us tonight. A Jesuit graduate and private student whose family, Chetta and Bob, have also become lifelong friends. Hannah Martin, an Adams graduate, who Jay took under his wings and taught her how to play because from what I heard, she really didn't want to go to PE. Matt Chauvin, a Holy Cross graduate and recent double major graduate of LSU who came to our house as a baby for private lessons and never left. Jay also taught his father and his uncles Thank you all for immediately saying yes when asked to speak and for the kind words that we all will remember for the rest of our life. Also, a big shout out to all those who gave their time and talent to practice and provide the music that was written by Mr. Eric Morales. To my family, my sister Darby, brother-in-law Eddie, my brother AJ, who I think is in the back in the band, 
Jay's only sister, Janice, and brother-in-law, Jean, and to my lifelong friend, Laura, who always knew what to say, what not to say, and when to say it. Thank you for helping me learn how to navigate a very rough road one day at a time. I'd like to now say a few words about my husband. Besides being a loving and devoted husband, a phenomenal father to his three sons, he was an extraordinary grandfather to his four grandchildren. whom he loved unconditionally more than life. He would talk to strangers when we'd go out about his grandchildren. He was bigger than life to all who knew him musically, but to us, he was simply Jay, Dad, Papa, sometimes geek because of his OCD, a very quiet, simple, humble person. Jay's love for music was incomprehensible. He truly believed in life that music does make a difference. Whenever there were budget cuts in the system, he fought hard to keep music alive in our schools. He was a perfectionist to a fault, and his standards were high. But he believed if you took the time to give every child the self-esteem and self-confidence we all need they would rise to his standards and above every single morning he would hand each student a small paper with a thought for the day they didn't have to keep it but he required them to read it before they threw it away our lives taken a dramatic change since we lost Jay. When you sign up to be a band director's wife, you instantly become part of that life. Myself, along with our boys, when they were little, have been to every concert, high school football game, halftime shows, in the Superdome for the Saints, band trips all over the country, Mardi Gras parades, fundraisers, and on and on. Along the way, we met thousands of kids and their families, most of who Jay has kept up with through Facebook all these years later. He was not only a band director, he was the resident orchestra conductor at La Petite Theater for many years. He guest conducted concerts, for middle and high school bands throughout the South, but his true passion was teaching, and this is why he quite literally taught thousands of private students in our home. My next door neighbor asked me a few weeks after Jay passed, how are you dealing with the quiet in your house? My answer was very simple, <laughs> I'm not. I will share one very quick story that's a testament to how much he simply loved teaching music. He came home now about 25 years ago and asked me, what would you say if I told you I was, gonna, I was thinking about leaving high school man and moving to middle school? I didn't really know how to respond until he added, I've taught high school now for 23 plus years. My bands have won awards and performed all over the country, even being chosen the only band from Louisiana to represent the United States at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Montreux, Switzerland. I think I want to end my teaching career really teaching children who have never played an instrument before how to play music. How could I not agree with that? This was the plan for him to teach at Adams for seven or eight years and retire with 30 plus years in music education. So not seven, not eight, but 23 years later, 
he ended his career at Adams really teaching music in a band room that literally became his second home. From the bottom of my heart, thank you again for such a wonderful honor and event bestowed upon Jay. He may not have thought he was worthy, but we certainly do. We couldn't end tonight without saying these nine words you've heard over and over again from him. It's a good day to have a good day. Thank you. Now, as we ask, as we'd like everyone to ask, now we would ask everyone as they leave to take a look at the new name on the outside of the building, the Joseph J. Haydell Performing Arts Center. This concludes our ceremony tonight in the celebration of the life of J. Haydell. And Ms. Nicole and Nikki's going to say one final word. I was told this was not going to be completed until the EJ fight song was played. So, can all the EJ graduates stand and play the fight song? Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy your wonderful cloudy evening. Hopefully it doesn't downpour.